Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings. I'm Bladed Tech. If you were a student in the last 20 years or so, or if you have kids who are or were students, you'll recognize this calculator immediately as one of the TI-83, TI-84 graphing calculator family. Why? Because virtually every middle school, junior high school, and high school in the United States mandates the use of the TI-83 or TI-84 when learning math. Why this is so has been covered thoroughly on other YouTube channels. But in summary, let us say that Texas Instruments has excelled in the patronage of educational institutions and educational standard setting bodies in the US. Thus, even though Casio mass produced the world's first graphing calculator, the FX7000G, five years before TI introduced their first graphing calculator, it is TI that dominates the US market. That means that 30-year-old computing technology will still cost you around $90 to $130 new, depending on the model and whether you want a color screen. Compare that to a comparable Casio model, which is around $35. Unfortunately, school guidelines mean that choosing a Casio model is out of the question. It is possible to get a used TI-8384 for about $40 to $75 if you can find them. There is another option. For about five bucks, you can buy a used TI-81. It offers all the necessary functionality of a TI-83 or 84, but for a price you don't mind if it gets lost or broken. Let's look at the TI-81 and explore how it compares. With the introduction of graphing calculators by Japanese competitors in the mid-1980s, it became clear to Texas Instruments that some sort of response was required. The original scientific calculator market was aimed at post-secondary students, engineers, and scientists, users that had little use for the rudimentary graphing capabilities possible on a handheld calculator at that time. But the belated acceptance by secondary schools of calculators as part of math instruction particularly in algebra and pre-calculus, changed the market. TI had managed to force out of business all other U.S. handheld electronic calculator manufacturers other than Hewlett-Packard. These two electronic giants still battled in the domestic, scientific, and financial calculator niches, but it was clear that HP held the upper hand, particularly for those that preferred reverse Polish notation instead of algebraic notation. However, HP's focus on RPM calculators made it less likely that their graphing calculator the HP 28C introduced in 1987 would become the standard in secondary schools given that algebraic notation was more closely aligned with teaching methods. HP calculators were also quite pricey, but calculators from Sharp and Casio used algebraic notation were already readily available in graphing format and were affordable. Commodore's history of manufacturing handheld calculators and its difficulties with Texas Instruments as its supplier of integrated circuits as well as its forays into typewriters, adding machines, and personal computers can be found in episode 1, the link to which is below. Texas Instruments designed the TI-81 around the Zilog Z80 microprocessor. 
the chip used in just about every small computing appliance from 1979 onwards. This made sense because it used Intel's industry standard 8080 instruction set and was cheaper than the comparable Intel 8086 and 8088 microprocessors. As far as its own chips, TI's old 4-bit TMS-1000 microcontrollers were outdated, TI had never commercially released an 8-bit microcontroller, and their TMS-9900 16-bit microcontroller was too expensive. Texas Instruments also wasn't trying to design a cutting-edge graphing calculator. They were designing a cheap and reliable graphing calculator. The microprocessor was cheap, the 2400 bytes of RAM was cheap, the case and buttons were cheap, and the printed circuit board was cheap. The one expensive component was the LCD display with 96 by 64 pixels, a real luxury in 1990, but even that feature became progressively cheaper as the years wore on. It was a design philosophy that was the opposite of Hewlett Packard, which made premium calculators. HP's 1972 introduction of its iconic model HP 35 scientific calculator and its storming of the computing world was covered in episode 3. A link to episode 3 can be found below. Usually being fourth to the market is a formula of a disaster, but in this case caution and cleverness won out. The TI-81 was designed specifically for the secondary school market, teachers and students. Guidebooks were carefully written to support teachers, and special display equipment was designed to be added to the calculator for group instruction. I'll be going over an example of this in a future episode. Within a few years, TI jumped from fourth to first in the market, and stayed there. Preference for their calculators meant price staying power, so in an environment of falling electronics prices and accelerated technological advancement, the TI-81's price and technology did neither. In 2019, the price of the TI-84 Plus CE, the current top Texas Instruments TI-8X graphing calculator model, is the same as the TI-81 was in 1990, and the former's technology differs little other than a jump in RAM, clock speed, and access to 3.5 megabytes of flash ROM. It does have a mid-resolution color display, a minor concession to 21st century technology, but the better display is not required by school rubrics. These minor changes over three decades means that the manufacturing cost of the TI-8X has actually fallen in real dollars, allowing Texas Instruments to make a tidy profit in its calculator division year after year. You're probably thinking that the TI-81 is much larger than the TI-8384, 30 years of miniaturization technology and all that, but it isn't. Both calculators are six and three quarters long, by three and a quarter wide and three quarter high. That is 171 millimeters by 83 millimeters by 19 millimeters for you metric purists out there. The screen size is exactly the same and each calculator has 50 buttons. Both models take four AAA batteries for power. There are some differences. There is 20K extra RAM and 13K extra clock cycles in the TI-8384, as well as several additional second level function buttons. The more rounded appearance of the case of the TI-8384 implies better ergonomics, but I didn't find the newer models any better ergonomically than the TI-81, even when considering the more rounded buttons than the TI-8384. The TI-81 comes with a cover that slots into its base, just like the TI-8384, as well as a 150-page manual. There is documentation and plenty online for the TI-81, so if you want to avoid the few extra bucks you'll need to buy and use manual, you can. So here is the bottom line. Do you need the TI-8384's performance boost for high school classes? In short, no. The improved functionality is interesting from a technological viewpoint, but both the TI-81 and the TI-8384 graph equally well polynomial functions with little difference in observed calculation lag. There is one important caveat. The TI-81 can't play Doom, or any other video game. That's because the calculator doesn't have a programming port. And even if it did, the base memory and CPU speed wouldn't really be practical. Hey, what did you expect for five bucks? I hope you enjoyed this episode on the TI-81. If so, hit that like button. And to make sure that you don't miss new episodes, click the subscribe button. Clicking on the bell icon will make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. 
Links to material related to this video, episodes 1 and 3, the BTM channel, and the TI-81 can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. And if you wish to support the channel in an extra way, click on our link to our Patreon channel. Thanks for watching!